Well, good evening and welcome to the North Virginia City Schools Board of Education meeting for Tuesday, February 1st. If everybody could please stand to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Grigsby? Here. Mrs. McCarthy? Here. Mrs. Saxon? Here. Mrs. Tamira? Here. Mr. Baca? Here. Finalization of the agenda. Is there anything to add and or delete? The agenda is final as presented. Thank you very much. We'll move right into the superintendent treasurer's report. Awesome. Uh, tonight we have one report and I would like to introduce Dr. Miller who will set us up for um, Ms. Rocco, Mrs. Rocco, who's going to do a presentation about the early literacy initiatives that have been happening throughout our district. Dr. Miller. Hi, thank you. Um, so we wanted to be sure to give you an update. We've been talking about all of the exciting changes that we've been really working on for the past almost five years now uh, in the literacy, especially K to two, but also um, we've expanded that into grade three and four this year as well. So um, our entire early literacy plan and where we're headed. And so I thought the person that can do that best is Stacey Rocco. <laughs> she is uh, the associate principal and she has primarily been working with grades K to two. And she's really focused in on the early literacy because that is her background and she is, um, she's just a wealth of knowledge in that area. So I'm really excited for you to be able to hear all of the exciting things happening. Jeez, thank you. Between you and that young gentleman in the backside looks very important. He no wonder who I was. <laughs> so um, I want to give you an update about what we've been doing. Uh, my main focus has been kindergarten, first and second grade. Um, the slide that I have up here is just a quick, well, those are the mascots from phonics that the teachers have been using K1 and 2. And then the spiral bound are called the units. Um, and each unit is, is a four to six week unit. They're spiral bound. They come in a little um, case for the teachers. So this is like impossible to read. So I apologize. <laughs> but um, this is the, the literacy block is the components. So during the day, um, the teachers K1 and 2 have this built into their schedule. So they have 10 minutes for uh, phonemic awareness. 45 minutes for writer's workshop, 45 for reading workshop, 10 minutes for shared reading, 20 minutes for phonics, and 10 minutes for read aloud. So when they built their schedule, um, they built the, these times into their schedule knowing these are the, the ones that they wanted to do. So I'm gonna talk about uh, looking at the units, which is the curriculum, which is the reading, writing, and phonics. That's what we have K2. It comes from Teachers College out of Columbia University in New York City, and it's called the, T the Reading and Writing Project. So we are doing, the focus this year has been writing the phonics for K-1-2. Uh, some of the teachers have some background in reading and have been doing the reading, but the main focus from my end has been um, the writing and phonics. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've been supporting them. So this is the framework of workshops. So let's think about reading. So during reading time, there's a mini lesson. It's eight to 12 minutes. Usually I try to tell teachers like 10 minutes. So imagine a bunch of kindergartners in front of you and you teach the mini lesson, you, you know, 10 minutes. Cause after that, and then I've heard here 10 minutes <laughs> of my presentation, <laughs> stop paying attention. So it's like, you know, you gotta keep them going. So same with the kids, you have them in front of you and you're teaching. There's a teaching point, you make a connection with the kids, like, you know, yesterday we were talking about, you know, how great it is that, you know, when you're reading fluent, fluently, um, and then today I'm going to teach you, and that's where the standard comes in. It's in language that the kids can understand. And then there is a process where the teacher shows an example, teaches them, like, this is how you do this. Now try it with the partner on the rug. They try it, the teacher gets up, teaches in to the partnerships, listens then comes back and then talks to the kids about when you go off today in your reading time, make sure you're always putting your finger under every word, make sure you're scooping up your words um, and off they go. So off they go to read. Now you can imagine at first with uh, kindergarten, 
even first grade, it's hard to establish like stamina for them to read. So at first, like 30 minutes, like that's a lot of time, but they will build to 20, 30 minutes of reading because as their stamina increases, so does their ability to read. So they go off and they read. Um, during that time, that's when I call the magic hat. So I'm pulling kids, if I'm a teacher, in small groups or one-on-one -on -one based on all the data that I have about that student in order to grow them from where they're at. So I can have small groups around anything that I've taught. I have, if I have kids that need to, that are still learning their sounds, if I have kids that are really working on comprehension, they're taking off and reading, I'm able during that time because I've established routines and procedures to teach into that. Um, and afterwards, it's a share. I just bring the kids back. And some, a lot of times the share is just like, I wanna talk about how great so-and-so did this, the time to like shine on what the kids did when they were off reading. So that is the framework for workshops, <laughs> reading time and writing time. Phonics time, the kids are in front of them, in front of the teacher for 20 minutes. And it's explicit right in front of them happening. Um, they don't go off and practice. The small groups for phonics go happen during uh, writing and reading. I'm out of breath, it's 10 minutes. It's, okay. <laughs> okay, next. I have one more slide, I believe. So just to give you one more quick, um, this was in kindergarten today. So I thought I'll just gonna go in um, and just come back and tell you exactly what happened today. So what is unique and what I'd like about uh, reading and writing workshop is that there isn't a prompt of the day. So it's not like yesterday, this is what I did when I went home. On the weekend, I did this. <laughs> It's not, so right now in kindergarten, they're writing how-to books. So while they're writing how-to books, the teacher before is like, I'm gonna show you how we do a how-to book. Let's talk about how are we gonna tell the new kindergartners that are coming in how to do a fire drill. And the teacher does a writing sample for the students. Um, but they go back and they get to pick. So teachers are talking to the kids, giving them ideas. They all come with, and even, you know, talking to them if they have trouble with what to write about. So. Today, um, I read a book, How to Plant a Carrot, How to Throw a Football, How to Tap, and How to Throw a Spiral. And I was like, the Browns never leave me alone. That <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's number six. I'm like, oh, it's number six. But um, so it was fun today. It was a lot of how to, and the kids were really excited because it was all about their experiences and where they were, um, and very excited to share out. Um, I had a kid that he talked about so a reluctant uh, writer came up to me. He's like, I said, the first thing you have to do is be focused when you throw the ball. I'm like, yes, focus. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so those, that's just a quick little um, about the curriculum for um, reading, writing, and phonics. Do you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask? First of all, yes. you're beaming, both of you are. And it's awesome <laughs> to see the excitement and stuff. Uh, this is going to be a shameless papa plug because it's working. I had my granddaughter's in kindergarten and she didn't have the opportunity to attend preschool. So she met with a tutor once a week. So she was behind based on her first assessment. And we had her most recent assessment. She scored nine, in the 99th percentile, 99% better than her peer group. But we see it at home. She's reading, she's sounding out words. She's reading books to her three-year-old brother. She's helping him to sound out words. Downside is Nana and Papa can't spell stuff in front of her anymore because she's bigger than that. So we gotta figure out another way to communicate. But I'm telling you, what's going on in that building is absolutely working. And she comes home excited. At dinner time, we share our day. She talks about what she's doing in class. We have 20 or 30 books stapled at home where she takes a random notebook paper and makes a staple and she's writing stories and stuff. So she's excited about it. And seeing the smile on both of your faces and how passionate you are about it, I have a better reason to understand why she's as successful as she is. So it's working. So thank you. Um, where was, is this all the new stuff that we had laid out? Is that part of that? So we've been slowly phasing all this over the past about four years. So it's it's been a process. And then in addition to all of this, we have uh, built in some com com components for the dyslexia bill that's coming. So we have those pieces as well, the phonemic awareness with Hegarty. So this is one piece of the bigger puzzle that Stacey shared, um, and it's all coming together. So we're really excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kindergarten's the best. I had to say it. Here's an opportunity for hearing of the public. If there's anybody in attendance this evening that would like to address the Board of Education, please approach the podium and sign in if you have not already done so. Okay. 
Uh, normally in our regular our second meeting, we have an opportunity for announcements. It's not usually part of this agenda, but we did receive a letter board of ed from uh, Ed and Linda Hofstetter. Uh, this letter is for the music department. We were invited to attend our grandson's music night in December. Wow, were we glad we came. What a good sounding group of singing you developed. We have been to so many school functions and this was delightful. We also thought whomever, whomever brought the idea of different customs was brilliant. It shows the children such a wide outlook on different customs and to incorporate into that into music was a wonderful learning experience for the kids. We think the school, the teachers and all involved did a wonderful job. Oh, so I wanted to share this with everybody. And it's you. nice when we get kudos. And, uh, so not a place on the agenda, but I made one, so. Moving <laughs> 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 to the consent agenda, the education report, Ms. Tamara. Thank you. We have one agreement tonight to enter into a three-year agreement with Blackboard to provide web hosting for the district's website. This agreement includes a mobile application as well as ADA compliant software. It is anticipated that the new website will launch during the summer of 2022. This is the first reading. The second reading and consideration of approval will be at the February 15th meeting. Thank you. We'll move into the communications report. Mr. Grigsby. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education accept the following gifts with appreciation. A monetary donation of $100 was donated by Tanya Katsaros to Rachel's Closet Program. One gently used electric keyboard music instrument was donated by Lauren Friedrich to the Ranger High Tech Academy. A monetary donation of $100 was donated by Christine Srigliano to help cover the cost of the high school winter formal. We thank our committee for the tremendous support of our schools and students. Uh, buildings and operation report. We have a resolution declaring an urgent necessity in approving a contract for the construction of modular classroom buildings. This is the first reading for the resolution. The second reading and consideration of approval will be at the February 15th meeting. Dr. Chile, talk a little bit about the necessity. Absolutely. Thank you. Would anybody like to talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we? Um, why are we getting these modular units and where will they be located? So I can talk on the, at least the necessity part of it as it relates to using the resolution. So um, for a project of this magnitude, uh, in order to bid it out, there would have to be specifications put in place, meaning we would have to hire a company to come in, work with us over the course of, it, it could be a month or longer to put specifications in place, at which point then we would have to post those specifications to be bid on by a company or companies hopefully um, receive those those bids, analyze them, award a bid, and then start the process. Um, we are in a very tight time crunch as it is right now to have these in place by the start of the school year. Um, so to go through that standard bid process uh, would put us beyond the time frame that we need to start the school year uh, with those in place. So that's why it, the urgent necessity is there and allows us to move in a fashion that'll have these in place. Um, David, I don't know if you want to talk in more detail about yeah, Why from the these? necessity necessity piece. <laughs> right. necessity piece is, is, you know, we've talked for a long time about being crunched for space. So if we look at the high school itself in its current configuration this school year, the first two periods of the day and the last two periods of the day, every single classroom are used. And that includes spaces that were not designed as classrooms. So for instance, this year we've turned a third of the media center into a classroom that is used every single period of the day. Um, as we look ahead to next school year, we know that our enrollment at the high school is going to grow by 80 students to begin with. Um, so that's going to take a space or a lack of space and stress that even further uh, to put those additional 80, 80 students in the building itself. So that's going to push capacity for next year, assuming nobody moves in of 1,430 or so students at the high school. Uh, that building for perspective was built for maybe a thousand students, best case scenario. So by adding these mobile classrooms, um, and there'll be eight of them in total, that really gives us an additional somewhere between 55 and 65 classroom spaces to use during the course of the day. So to help alleviate the, the space issue that we have both now and with those 80 additional students joining us. Thank you. Sure. 
then Mr. Prith, um, we have another component that's making this a necessity. <laughs> Space is not unique to us, correct? The Rain Community College is experiencing the same problem. Yes. So our our uh, Ranger High Tech Academy students yes. are going to come back and utilize these trailers as well. Correct. correct. Of the eight spaces, we have currently slotted um, three of those as dedicated to Ranger High Tech Academy spaces. So we have been fortunate to have LCC as a partner. Um, they are a tremendous partner. They are facing some of that same space crunch, particularly when it comes to lab spaces and some other things. Um, we've been fortunate over the last year or two because they have done so much online learning with COVID and everything else happening. So as they return to a full slate and a full schedule of on-campus courses, you know, that squeezes their spacing too. So all of this has kind of just combined into the perfect storm. Um, and when we look to bring Ranger High Tech back, we get some advantages as well about providing some opportunities for students both at high tech, but our traditional high school as well, that aren't available to them when we're in separate locations. And then Mr. Yonker, so the public's aware, we went out and visited three different situations with these trailers, correct? We didn't just go out and buy the first trailers we came across, correct? No, we, we went and visited three physically, looked at them in addition to exploring many more options that we, we narrowed it down to those three to go look at to make sure we were getting what was going to suit our students and staff the best and, and knowing that these weren't just going to be a temporary thing meaning one year that they're going to have to be there a while made sure we got the best fit for our staff and students and ultimately the group that we decided what's going to provide all the on-site work which is necessary kind of, as well uh, as bathroom facilities and storage facilities with these trailers that we've decided to purchase yeah it's nice i guess for lack of better terms they were kind of a one-stop shop meaning we weren't going to have to go out and subcontract site work before the trailers came on that they, they handle all of that they handle tying in the plumbing to um, the existing uh, framework of the high school building they'll work with um, the electric company to make sure the power's run to it so it from a simplicity standpoint it's nice that they can handle all of that for us so they are a turnkey operation yes they finish up they add us the keys we utilize yes. yep. um, mr you. young i have a question um where is this where are we putting these yeah that's a great question um <clears throat> i don't have a map so if you uh kind of visualize back behind the wood shop metal shop and the social <laughs> studies hallway so you've got the outfield of the baseball field um and then there's um the auxiliary gym and then it kind of connects to the wood shop metal shop area and there's an alcove back there where there used to be a, a smaller modular unit um many years ago for the high school but there's a grassy area back there that we're going to put it there um there's an electrical transformer that was there from the previous trailer that was used so um <clears throat> it's the the best possible location to, to put this unit thank you yeah. Isn't the parking lot area? Is there a park like there's there's a small parking lot back there where some staff can come into it'll it'll cut into some of that, but it'll have a minimal impact on and that's the location, right? I'm imagining yes. that. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Baca, can we go can I ask a question about the um, blackboard? Can I go back to that? Sure. I just wanted to um I know that we, or it had been mentioned that we're going to be able to pull the community or the parents, Mr. Hieronymus, about that. Maybe, maybe you're not the right person. To ask. I'll take it. Okay, Mr. So actually, in this <laughs> coming Friday's uh, monthly communication, there was actually a survey going out to our families. Okay. To talk about communications from the district, talk about preferred communications from the district. How would you like to receive information? Um, and the information about the website itself is going to be part of that survey. Okay. So families can expect to see that in our Friday communication this week. Appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right, we're moving to human resources report, Ms. Saxon. Sure. Uh, we have a number of items in the human resources report. 24 special project supplemental contracts, two support staff appointments, one volunteer recognition, eight certified staff adjustments, one support staff adjustment, one certified staff resignation, one support staff resignation. <laughs> This is the first reading for these items. The second reading and consideration for approval will be at the February 15th regular meeting. This includes the human resource report. 
Thank you. All right, it is recommended that the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of public employees, and matters related to negotiations of public employees. There will be no action to follow. Move. Second. Moved by Ms. McCarthy. Second by Ms. Saxon. Roll call, please. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Grigsby? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Hey everybody, thank you for coming out this evening.